Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're gonna be talking about how to create a constructor inside of JavaScript. Now, this is a fundamental piece of object-oriented programming inside of JavaScript. Even if you're starting to work with classes in JavaScript, the constructor is really the, the basis for it all. Classes are just a syntactical sugar that makes it a little bit easier and a little bit more what people are used to from other programming languages. So first, you need to check out our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? Dev Mountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real world applications and get a job in the industry through Dev Mountain's career centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, Dev Mountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So this video is going to be very simple. All we're going to do is we're going to create a constructor to create users. So when you create a constructor, by convention, you use a capital letter. So it'll look something like this, function user with a capital U. And then when we want to create a new user, all we have to do is create a variable and say new user, like so. And then what we'll do is we'll just console log and output this new object we created called me. So let's do a refresh. Right now we have an empty object, which makes sense because we're not actually giving it any properties. So inside of JavaScript, when you call a function as a constructor, like we're doing here, so if you prefix it with the new keyword, then inside of the function, the keyword this refers to that new object we're creating. So what we can do is we can console log this and we can watch as it's getting created. So when we first start, it's going to be empty. So we have this empty object. Then what we can do is we can assign properties to this object by saying this dot and creating a property such as name and we'll just give it Caleb as an example, but this isn't a really good example because that means everybody who's created is going to have the name Caleb. So I'll show you guys how to customize it for person to person, but for now we'll just start with Caleb, do a refresh, and now once we're done down here, it, this person has the name Caleb. So we'll do a console log this here again and see that the second time around we have a property on this object. So we can use this to our advantage by attaching properties to it, and that's how we basically define the structure for any new objects we're creating with this constructor. So how do we change the name from person to person? Well, we can actually take it in as an argument. So we need to create a parameter here, we'll just call it name, and then what we'll do is we'll just assign that value here. Now when we call the function, we need to pass in a name such as Caleb. Now this should do the same exact thing, refresh, and there you go. Cool, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of these console logs, just so it's a little cleaner, and I'm gonna create a couple objects. So we'll create you, and I don't know what your name is. We'll go with Camila, and we're gonna console log me, and we're gonna console log you. Now in this situation, I have the name Caleb, and you have the name Camila. So we've parameterized this constructor to make it customizable for individual people. As another example, let's create an interest parameter and we'll assign that to the object as well. This dot interest and we'll assign it the value interest. So we'll pass in an array here and this is where we'll put the interest. Uh, we'll say cooking, eating, and exercise. Now one of these is a lie, can you guess which one? Haha, ha, you guys probably thought it was this one, but it's actually this one. Tricked you. Yeah, I'm not a huge cooker. I could probably burn water. I used to try to do a reality YouTube TV show called Caleb Cooks, but it didn't go so well, so I just uh, privatized that <laughs> and moved on to bigger, better things. All right, Camila, let's say you're interested in Hot Wheels. Awesome. Now when we do a refresh, Look at this. We got interest, which is an array, and three elements, cooking, eating, and exercise. And you, on the other hand, interest, Hot Wheels. You can also modify the object after the constructor. So for example, we could say me dot membership and set it to gold as an example. And we can console log me and see that that is added to my object. Now you do have the option to add methods in here. So you can say this dot print info or whatever you want, but it's not always recommended to put methods in the constructor function. And we're gonna talk about that as we get in a little bit more depth 
with object-oriented programming. Basically, that's going to copy the method for every single object. It's not always what we want to do. I'm just going to adjust the screen a little bit and make it a little easier to see. That's all I got to say for you guys in this video. Now, here's what we're going to do. In the next video, we're going to talk about something called factory functions. Similar to this, but different. You'll notice here that we do not have a return. And that's one of the key differences between a constructor and a factory function. Then after that video, we're going to come back to methods when it comes to constructors. Because the way you want to do it is a little bit different than you might expect. Like I said, you can go in here and put methods, but I'm going to be teaching you guys the recommended way, which is a little bit different. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video changed your life forever. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.